Hello, my name is uh, Dimitrios Buchalis. I'm a professor of tourism and technology in Bournemouth University in England. Uh, I'd like to talk to you about uh, accessible tourism and providing services for tourism, uh, tourism services uh, for people with disabilities and those people who have got specific needs. Uh, in the last few years, we have realized that this is an enormous market that is growing very, very fast. Uh, we did some research some years back and we identified that this market is almost about 150 million people only in Europe. Obviously when we're talking about accessibility and disability, we include people who have got mild types of disability like wearing glasses, all the way to uh, people who have got severe uh, uh, issues with disability and they may not be able to move on their own or they may need particular um, uh, medical care. Uh, what we've been um, researching in the last few years is the fact that uh, people with disab disabilities, they would like to participate in tourism activities like any, anybody else, and the, the sooner we understand their needs and their requirements, the better that the industry will be able to actually uh, sufficiently meet their needs and do that in a profitable and sustainable way. A lot of the research has been published in those two books. Ta -da. Uh, this is the theor theoretical book that brings all the concepts and the theories out, and this is the practical book that um, says how we can um, uh, work with um, um, facilities and, uh, and services in order to provide a better experience to people with um, specific needs. The books have been done with Ivor Ambos, uh, who is um, the director of the European Network of Accessible Tourism, and my good friend Professor Simon Darcy uh, from Australia, who is himself disabled, and he is uh, already uh, making a lot of um, uh, impact in the industry globally on those things. Uh, as far as the organizations are concerned and destinations are concerned, why do we need uh, to provide for tourism and disability? Obviously the market is huge, the economic benefits that the markets are bringing us are quite substantial and at the same time it enables us to look after our social responsibility uh, and to provide services for all. After all, tourism is an inclusive industry and we need to engage with everybody else. Now, when I'm working with industry, quite often people are afraid that they need to have facilities that they do not have or that they need to make se severe uh, changes to their infrastructure to be able to welcome that market. This may be the case when you are looking for um, providing services to the top of the pyramid, those people who have got a more severe requirements. But you can start from simpler uh, initiatives. The, the best, the, there are two types of accessibility issues that we need to address. The first one is obviously architectural accessibility, so we can have our facility being accessible for people with special needs and to be able to support those needs at different stages. Uh, but the second and perhaps more important um, accessibility issue that I'm involved with is how do we manage the information that we provide out. Um, so if someone has got specific needs, they'll need to know how your facility or your destination meet those specific needs. Uh, and they need to know, for example, whether the doors open enough to be able to go through their wheelchair or whether they'll have a sound system just in case of an emergency that they can wake them up if they're blind or if they cannot, um, they cannot see very well uh, the signs in, in, in a hotel. Um, a lot of those um, requirements are soft requirements and they can be easily adaptable in any facility. So what is critical is we need to understand some of the user requirements for this particular market and do at least the soft uh, changes that we can do, uh, especially in an older building and uh, in, in a building of um, cultural importance uh, to make sure that, that we facilitate the market. When we're designing new buildings, there's no excuse for not having a design for all. And there's no excuse for not actually designing it in a way that can facilitate all the requirements for all users. And again, when we're talking about um, the accessible market, we're not only talking about um, disabled uh, 
customers. We are also talking about um, um, families with um, uh, prams for, for kids, or we're talking about people with heavy suitcases that they cannot lift them. Uh, we're talking about a whole range of different kind of um, uh, requirements from all our travelers. So it's important that we manage um, our facility and we manage the information of the facility. Now it's understandable that not all the facilities will be accessible for every single uh, uh, customer. And it's understandable that some facilities will be better better primed for, for some guests. I think the important thing is to understand um, what information is required by whom and to provide this information in, in, a, in the best possible way so when the guest is assessing our, our facility they'll know whether this is going to meet their requirements or not. If it does, then quite often they'll start um, having a discussion with us and they'll have an inquiry to uh, discuss specific needs. This is where the service recognition is coming into place. And it's absolutely critical, I think, in the tourism industry that we train our staff and we train our people to meet the requirements of people with specific needs. Um, I think, ultimately, the only disability is attitude. Ultimately, we can more or less satisfy the needs of every kind of um, uh, um, specific needs that you, that you find in, in the marketplace. And I think with attitude and with kindness and with providing um, hospitality in the sense of welcoming people to our facilities and by providing an accurate information about what our facilities are for, um, we will be able to serve the accessibility market and will be able to provide services and, 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 um, and offerings that will enable us uh, to bring this market uh, back many times because ultimately, if they find the right kind of product, they'll go back uh, over and over again. So, the message is simple. The accessibility market is quite huge. There is uh, fantastic uh, economic benefits for actually serving the market, but there are also social responsibility benefits um, and benefits to the society for doing so. And I think those people who will understand the principles and implement some fairly simple um, uh, rules and, um, and, and, and facilities in their, in their properties, they'll be able to attract this market and serve it well. Uh, as I said, there's no excuse for new facilities not to be designed for uh, accessibility, but a lot of the older facilities in traditional destinations can be easily adapted to welcome everybody. I very much hope that um, you find that informative, and I hope that you are going to be able to make the small changes that are required and to embrace the attitude of welcoming uh, people with all kinds of needs, and particularly those with accessibility needs. Thank you.